on everybody welcome back to the channel this is lady nika in with a review for love and hip-hop atl it was last night's episode i can't remember what the actual season is or the uh, episode that we're into so i'll put all that in the description box below but yeah i'm i'm having to redo this video y'all last night i did the video after watching the show two times, I thought it was probably one of my better reviews of the shit. Excuse me, y'all know I ain't, even in the morning, I'm not finna come, you know, my shit can't be wrong. And you got strikes against you, everything that work for you, you gotta keep it real. But anyway, yeah, I don't know what a motherfucking video is. I don't. I mean, I left, when I went to sleep last night, the shit was processing, well, it was uploaded. I kept the window open and everything, the motherfucker just disappeared, so... I didn't throw away all the notes and everything else, so I wrote down a couple of notes based on what I remember from last night, and I'm going to try to do this review as best I can. I do apologize that I don't know what happened to the video at all. I, I, it's not in my trash or nothing like that. You know, it's not showing. I don't know where the motherfucker disappeared to. Damn that damn hair getting away from me, baby. Okay, now that, that bang right. But, uh, I... <sighs> I don't know. That's that's weird to me. That's the second, third time that shit didn't happen to where a video just disappeared. It be uploading and then all of a sudden it's like it's gone. I can't find it nowhere. But, yeah, I'm, I'm having to redo it this morning, y'all. So I'm sorry about that. I, I didn't anticipate having this problem. I thought it would already be up on YouTube by now, so I don't know. Um, also, as soon as I get off this, uh, making this video, I'm calling you Miss Squeaky, because I know you've been trying to reach me, and you ain't, ain't been, I ain't been neglecting you, baby, I just, girl, that illness came, and it, it came like a thief in the night, and I've been trying my best for two days, try to pay catch up, making sure all the business situations are taken care of on my end, dealing with my kids, you know, they ain't been giving me no problems, y'all, bless the Lord, thank you, Jesus, the motherfuckers ain't been tripping, but, uh, yeah, and y'all real from spilling the teas. I saw that you called me this morning. I was still asleep. I'm sorry about that. I will hit you back up on Twitter so that you can call me back if time permits for you to be able to do so. But y'all, yeah, I ain't been ignoring nobody. Also, before I get into the review, I want to say thank you again to everybody that was so supportive and welcoming me back to YouTube. I, you know, when you doing these videos and stuff, you don't never know. You know, I, I try to give y'all enough content to keep y'all wanting to come through and see me and stuff. I seem like I'm missing something ain't right. Is it right now? I don't know. I hope it's right. But anyway, you know, we try to get y'all content to keep y'all coming, baby. But you never know, you know, people mindsets, uh, um, you know, they be my attention span that long, baby. Out of sight, out of mind. So I was really worried about if I had actually lost subscribers or something like that because of my absence for a whole week, nothing being said for me. So it felt really good to come back and know that no, I did not lose. In fact, I gained and everybody was waiting on me. So thank y'all again from the bottom of my heart. I'm sorry y'all see me a little irritated right now because that was a damn good review. Y'all, I had put my foot in that one. But anyway, we're going to start on back off and I'm going to try to do it from what I remember. Shit. Um... I recall, uh, and y'all gonna see Wake and Bake this morning, I'm gonna tell you right now. We already did no hoes bar tag, so you know what the fuck I do, so don't act like you, you, you come on. I don't feel like this shit today. I need a knack of my nerves a shot, and my damn good video gone that I probably could've got a couple coins from, for real. Uh, shit, at least some fucking birthday money, but any damn way. Um... Started off, I remember seeing Don and, and Jessica Dime sitting up talking about, you know, Mimi ain't did what she's supposed to do. Apparently, Jessica had set up this uh, uh arrangement with Mimi where she gave her 90 days to, and I think I remember that she gave her 90 days to show her what she can do well. To Jessica's dismay, Mimi hadn't made nothing come to fruition. She ain't even met Stevie J yet, even though I don't understand how the fuck you need to meet him when you so-called already met him before. But anyway, we ain't going there. Um, that's what happened. So, just, uh, Dawn with her dirty ass is basically telling her, you know, go, you know, go on on and, and drop Mimi and come on over here so I can, damn, this bang doing its own thing today, this morning. Uh, she telling that bitch to, uh, go on, drop Mimi and come on through because she can get her so much money a week. And my thing is, how the hell can you get a woman who, by all intents and purposes, talent lies with 
shaking her ass on a pole. How you gonna guarantee her that kind of grip every week? You know, who you know? And better yet, who you? Because we ain't know you till last season. After Jocelyn stopped fucking with you. And you got mad. So, I don't know how she gonna do that. But that's what she's saying she gonna do for her. Alright, then we gonna uh, go on over there to uh, Mimi. Mimi is going to visit Arian. We finally see Arian has them coins and kicked in. I got a piece of straight hair working on my nerve. I got it. <laughs> Y'all know I'm going to get it. But, um, she, uh, going to see Arian and them coins didn't kick in because Arian got her a little condo now. She ain't got much furniture in there, but she got a roof and a child. You got to crawl for you all, so I ain't mad at you. But Mimi going over there saying that she wanted to talk to her friend since everything went down bad last time. She wants to try to, you know, give Arian, she want to apologize to her and answer any questions that Arian may have for her. Because she didn't like the fact that her and Arian had that disagreement fall out they had the other week when Mimi admitted that she did know, in fact, about this sex tape and how it got leaked and all this stuff. She masterminded the whole shit with Nico ass. Well, she telling Arian when she get there she never told her because she didn't, for one, feel like she could trust her because Arian is so judgmental. Arian let her know, no, nah, I'm not judgmental, I'm opinionated, but I'm only opinionated because I care so much. You don't have to hide nothing from me. You could have told me the truth from the jump because time and time again I jumped in to defend you. And basically, I was defending you and you, you wasn't being 100 with me. So, you know, that's what they were doing. And um, she tells Mimi that, you know, no matter what, she got her back. You know, Arian is her friend. She gonna be there for Mimi regardless. I know the joke is that Mimi and Arian fucking around. And they might be every now and again, you know, getting close to one another. But at the end of the day, I can't say this much. I do believe Arian is this whole friend and this bitch need to get it together, okay? Well, um... She's saying that... She basically was telling Mimi that, look, you ain't got to worry about my relationship with Margot. I'm cool with her, but that came about because I wanted to understand what was going on, you know. And just like I have your back and I believed you from day one, you're going to have to understand that Margot feels the same way. she been knowing Nico for over 10 years, so she's only doing what I was doing for you. She's doing for him, so that's why she feels as strongly about the situation as she does. But they seem to have worked out their differences, and they're going to continue on their relationship as being friends, and that's good. I just hope that in the future that Mimi respects her a little bit more and, and respect their friendship enough to be able to tell her the fucking truth and not try to tell her some of it or what she feels like the girl needs to know. Come clean and tell her all this shit because at the end of the day, you're going to need motherfucking Aryan, and apparently you need her because you dead a motherfucking place now. All right, next we see Kalina, and she going over there to talk to Deb Abner. Now, she going to talk to Deb because Deb, well, Tony, for one, basically told her he didn't want to be a manager no more. And Rashida suggested to her last week uh, when they were at the club and stuff that she go speak with Deb because Deb is the type of woman that has a little authority in the city. And she also, you know, she older lady with a little sense about herself. I guess what Deb is to this to this uh, show is the voice of reason and the voice of wisdom. That's what it seems like. That That's the kind of skill they put her on on here. Now, I personally ain't never seen Deb do shit to, for her to earn the respect, the level of respect that she obviously gets on this show. But I ain't gonna knock it, but she did go over there and she talked to her and basically Kalina told her the truth, you know. At one time I was on, then I came off, you know, in between that time I wound up having a baby because I was, you know, trying to get my music thing together. My husband is my manager. He never really put that much effort into my pro, you know, my pro, uh, product 
and now he wants to run this club when in actuality he's not a club owner he's a producer and i thought that that's what he was gonna want to do but now he don't want to even produce me so now i'm out here and i want to get my music out there so i'm coming to you to find out from you what you know what steps should i possibly take because one thing we know for certain he not interested in helping me with my career anymore and i'm not you know i want my career she was upset about it because i mean i imagine that much just like with rashida they got to be a hell of a thing to have to go talk to another woman and tell her the man that you married the man you laying over having kids and shit by don't want to support your dream I couldn't deal with it, especially after I done put my money on that. Her and Rashida both did the same thing. Rashida giving Kirk all her coin to help him do whatever the fuck he want to do. He didn't give a fuck about her career. And now we got Colleen over here who actually has talent, not taking nothing away from motherfucking Rashida. But let's just be real. Rashida's career ain't like Kalina. Kalina got a real career. Kalina actually has talent. And she's an excellent songwriter. Did y'all see the list of people she done wrote for? From Miss Reetha on down to Miss Guy Got a Girl Got Something Going On. Then y'all remember she was with Puff and them back in the day and shit. So, you know, yeah, she has talent. And she don't understand why this man is treating her like that. When she just came up off all of her damn savings damn near to invest in a club for him. But now you telling me, yeah, I'm, I'm good enough. You love me enough for me to give you my money to invest in this fucking club that may go under at any time. But you don't love me enough to keep working on our music and help me get my career, the career that I want to have for me, back out there on the road. Child, ain't no motherfucking way. But Deb gave us some good advice. Deb told her, hey, what I'm going to need you to do is I'm going to need you to Get the paperwork stating that he's no longer, he's, re you know, you released him as your manager. He's released you as a client. I need that first. And then I need you, if you want to work with me, then I'm more than willing to work with you. But first, before anything happens, you have to be released from him as his client in order for me to take you on because I have no problem with working with you. She know Kalina works. She ain't got no problem with trying to get her somewhere. And I say, Kalina, if that's the best step for you, girl, then I suggest you go head on because clearly your husband don't give a fuck, honey. He don't give a fuck. And so, you know, she's sitting there. She was upset. She was crying and everything because it hurt her to, you know, we at this point. This, this is my partner in life and he not supportive of my dream bitch ain't no motherfucking way that club went in there and and trust and believe i would have known all that before this club thing came along because bitch when the guy my coin but okay okay well she's saying she gonna go and get you know tony to sign the papers releasing him as her manager so her and Deb can start working together next we see carly red on messy ass going over there to talk to just jessica dime and um, she telling, Jessica's basically telling me, telling Carly, Mimi ain't doing a damn thing. She ain't even met Steve or Jada, ain't been in no studio. Mimi is not doing anything that she's supposed to have done. And um, she wondering if the reason why Mimi hasn't moved forward is because, you know, as far as helping her with her career and with uh, meeting Stevie J and getting in the studio is because of Jocelyn. She said, Jocelyn not here, you know, she she can tell Jocelyn don't want to have nothing to do with her. Basically, this bitch that came on this show, she been sitting here throwing Jocelyn's name out ever since it was either Shanelka or she was saying Jocelyn. And the bitch, the, she, ain't nothing coming to fruition by her riding off Jocelyn's name. That's what's pissing her off. Mimi not moving to try to help her, even though Mimi got her own set of shit going on right now, which is probably why she haven't been forefront we're trying to get them established plus you know what happened last time Mimi was trying to help their ass she had that meeting with Jazzy Faye and this stupid bitch came in here and fucked it up for a damn self so she's saying that she think that Jocelyn is the reason why Stevie ain't trying to help more and Mimi is like that middle person okay when in actuality no, Jocelyn don't want Stevie working with Jessica, but Stevie don't want to work with Jessica his damn self. So, it's nothing that Jocelyn is doing that's stopping her from getting uh, Stevie and, and, and dying piece together. Clearly, the man ain't interested, because he know about the shit. You know, he ain't trying to hit that shit and, and whatever. 
Uh, well, she decided that now it's time for her to, since she can't use her in a positive light, making it seem like they the best of fucking friends, she gonna try to draw, you know, drop salt and, and fucking throw salt in the game on people and try to make the girl, you know, come in a negative way. Now, if you can't win on with kindness, you gonna try a little vinegar and see what you can catch with that, and you ain't gonna catch a damn thing. But she go in there sit, telling Carly that, you know, Jocelyn used to eat a box out and pay her. Okay, bitch, that ain't helping your case neither. Because, see, this is what you came across on my screen from me looking like last night. You let the world know that you ain't nothing but a hoe. Your pussy for self to the highest bidder, and it don't matter. You also let them know that apparently that pussy ain't too damn good. Because, bitch, for you to be stressing out behind trying to get in the studio, that means them coins, them stripper coins you had when you first came on this show from your last show in, in Miami, they must be running low, bitch, because now you need these coins. And since you didn't let us know your pussy is for sale, we also know the pussy ain't selling because apparently you you strapped for cash, bitch. You, you look at how you look at Looking like a big ass child. She like a crayon. Whatever. Well, she telling uh, Carly Red messy motherfucking ass all of that shit. And telling her that, you know, Jocelyn used to pay her and shit. And say that she could have took Stevie J from uh, Jocelyn back in the day. According to Miss Jessica Dime, there was an incident where they had to get together. And um, Jocelyn left and went in the bathroom. And Stevie basically was offering to try to motherfucking put some of his special sauce on her motherfucking shit and make them some baby back ribs, bitch. I guess. I don't know what the fuck they had going on, but that, you know, she's saying that shit. Now, if we go back, we see that, uh, basically, Steve is saying he don't have no recollection of the bitch because it must have been a foggy time in his life. In other words, bitch, you not. Yeah, I know I fucked you. I may have fucked you or whatever, but you ain't even worthy of me remembering really too much about you. What I do remember is I don't want to have nothing to do with you. But this messy bitch here, since she can't get in by pretending that her and Jocelyn are such good friends, she figures she be messy, she'll be able to fucking get in somewhere. So now she dropping salt and saying all this negative shit about Jocelyn and Stevie, but the shit ain't gonna come, you know, it ain't gonna do her no good either. And she told the right bitch to miss him, motherfucker, of the damn show. You know, I'm assuming that this this season, since Mona didn't call, get Carly no dick to play with this season, Carly is serving as the extra messy bitch. She always been the show messy bitch, but and and you need one on these shows. Every every reality show need a messy bitch, and I guess that's what the fuck Carly Red is. She the messy bitch, but she crunk she uh the messy bitch 2.0 this season because she ain't got no dick to suck on. So, you know that's all she needed to hear. She gonna take that right back to Jocelyn. Well, before she do that, you see Rashida meeting up with KD. Now at the beginning of the show, we saw that. Jock been staying over at Rashida and Kirk's house, sleeping on his couch. It's kind of getting to her because, you know, the nigga ain't got shit. He laying on her fucking couch. He eating up shit, drinking up Carter juice and all that stuff. So, you know, he done asked Rashida to talk to KD and possibly help him get back in with her. So, you know, after she realized that he seriously talking about, well, at least that's what he say, he seriously want to get back with KD, uh... She agreeing to go talk to her. Plus, she had talked to her anyway because y'all know she done sold Kirk shit. So, now she ready to buy a stove. So, uh, I told you one of them many motherfucking jobs Katie got is real estate. So, she she's helping her look for uh, a location for a uh, press. Uh, well, that's what she going to... That's what it is, press. But anyway, child. Uh. She meet up with Katie, and she's at telling Katie that Jock been at her house for the last couple of days. Katie is kind of shocked because she assumed that uh, Jock was over at the baby mama's house, one of them. You know, since she haven't seen him since they did their pregnancy test. 
So she assumed, but she found out that he'd been staying at Rashida's house, and that kind of got her feeling like maybe they can sit down and have a conversation. Plus, Rashida asking her to please do so because she ready for this motherfucker to get off her couch. So Katie saying she uh, agreed to meet up with Jock to hear him out, but she ain't promising that she going to necessarily get back with him because although she love him, he heard her, and she can't forget that. And Rashida telling her that she shouldn't forget it, but at the same time, if you truly love him, maybe you should give it a chance. So they going to meet up, whatever. All right. Mimi go back over there to Arian's house because she finna help Arian get her a condo together. You know, she ain't got shit up in there. So, I guess they they, they having a, a housewarming or whatever the fuck. Well, when Mimi get there, she noticed that it's a little too much shit going on. It's candles lit, hors d'oeuvres, every damn well. So, they led Mimi to believe that someone else was coming. So, she asked her and, she, and, and Arian did tell her that Marco was coming back too. Now, Mimi not quite understanding why Margo, why Arian is trying to get Mar Mimi and Margo to talk. Arian thing is, y'all probably could be cool with each other, but y'all both are pissed off, and you should, you're pissed off at each other when in actuality you should be mad at uh, uh, Nico, because he's the reason why you two don't get along, okay? So, she get there, Arian, I mean, um, Margo get there, and off the bat it go bad, because... This is what, this is what it is. Mimi so worried about whether or not this woman concerned about her being with her husband. No, when you were sleeping with my man, me and my man wasn't together, so technically he wasn't cheating on you. Now Mimi wanna say that when he was coming to New York, her uh Nico was laying up with um Margot. Well, you don't know that for certain, cause Margot let you know, you know, you don't know what go on in my life. So we was not together. He wasn't cheating on you with me because we weren't together. I was doing me. He was doing him at that time. Well, child, the shit just went bad because for one thing we get, Margot has no motherfucking respect for my, uh for Mimi. Why? Because Mimi is an old ass bitch that set up and made a sex tape, knowing she's a mother. And she lied about how it got distributed. Mimi a liar to her. And she fake. She said, she told Mimi that. She said, you to me represents a fake ass female. Nothing about you is real. You can't be honest with yourself. Your life in shambles. You, you're steady worrying about whether or not me and Nico got something going on. No, it's not that. It's you need to take care of you. So it got so bad, uh, Arian wind up telling Margo to go ahead on and leave because... At first, she was letting it flow, letting them get get out what they had to say to each other. But it became evident that Mimi was becoming bothered because she didn't want to call the girl bitches and stuff. And I like how... Uh, see, this is what I love about an uh, uh, intelligent bitch. I like a bitch that can, can get under your skin and don't even cuss you out. Believe it or not, I can do that. In a business setting. Now, when I get on this camera and in my everyday life around my people and stuff, hell, now I'm cut your ass out, get it over with. But, yeah, I like that. I like when a hoe can tear you down and never call you out your name, never use one derogatory word, but that bitch eat you for life. And that's what she was doing. That bitch was eating through Mimi flesh. Mimi was trying to act on Bala, but she was bothered. Well, she wound up leaving because, you know, and she said she didn't really appreciate Arian putting her in that position because she felt like, Arian could have possibly been trying to get her over there not to look at the apartment or help with getting the apartment deck. I mean, the uh, condo decorated. But, bitch, you got me over here trying to make me listen to this hoe. Now, you this hoe friend, but I'm not the bitch friend, so I don't want to be bothered like that. But she left and she, you know, she she wasn't here for Mimi. And, and I, I appreciate Margot for real. I really do. I really appreciate Margot because she real. And you, I, I've been listening to people talk about how that girl look. I mean, you know, yeah, she got a unique look, but let's just be real. How many models do we see look just like her? So, y'all need to stop trying to dog rag on that girl because apparently it's working. And then I found I found on, on the tube, baby, the bitch is talented. She actually can sing. So, you know, off the T.O.P., she got more going for herself than me, me motherfucking dog pussy ass get the good child whatever anyway katie and jock finally meet up okay you know she say he was blowing her phone up so finally she decided to go on to meet up with him thanks to rashida all right they get there and he's asking her for another chance and he offered her some handcuffs 
And I thought that was the most. We, is we grown? How you give a bitch some handcuffs and tell her where at night, when, when we're alone, you know, we through for the night, you can cuff me to the bed and I, I ain't gonna go nowhere. Or if we out and about and, and it running long, I cuff myself to the car so you ain't gotta worry about me doing that. First of all, if I gotta do all of this shit, I don't wanna be with your ass in the first place. I'm not gonna police your dick. I wish the hell I would. But she's, you know, she, even though she liking this shit, she handcuffed him right there and stuff. She asked this motherfucker questions that she really don't need to be asking because she's not ready for the answers. Now, she asked him, um, where was he staying before he stayed at Rashida's house? Come on, bitch. You already know where the fuck he been staying before he got to that girl house. And then you're going to ask her, uh, ask him, was he having sex with her? Them the same questions that got you standing over the balcony throwing shit, crying and sounding like a fucking man. Don't ask what you... What's, ex, what's understood don't have to be explained, bitch. And don't ask questions you already got the fucking answer to. You already know that prior to him being at Rashida's motherfucking apart, uh, house, her and Kirk's house, this motherfucker was probably at one of them baby mama's house and it was probably going to be seen him. And there's no fool. You ain't no fool. You know damn well that the kind of man that you. That, that's what I liked it about his wife. When he told, when his wife got in her ass a couple weeks ago and told her, "Bitch, you know what you're dealing with. Stop acting like this brand new to you." I don't understand, Katie. You know, yeah, you a little plump and shit like that, but bitch, have some fucking self esteem about yourself. You ain't got no motherfucking self esteem. You can't. Because you keep putting yourself in situation after situation. I don't give a goddamn. You done went out here. You done made some of yourself. You apparently got a cup of coin about your damn self. Why don't you find you somebody that truly wants you. And not somebody that needs you right now. Because that's all it is. He don't fucking love your fat ass. He just needs you right now. He needs you to keep writing them fucking checks. But she asked him that shit, and then he tell her the answer. Keep in mind, she done cuffed him to the damn table. So now her feet, she in her fucking feelings, and then throw some fucking water or some shit off on him, talking about he look thirsty. No, bitch, the fact that you there asking that question to a man you already know the answer to make you look like the thirsty bitch. You the one that needed to get you a whole cup or two and sit the fuck down. I can't, I'm not here for this stupid, this is a stupid ass fat bitch. I can't understand how you be so goddamn stupid. Now I know this is a show and we shouldn't take this shit literally, but I'm going to tell you something, it's a lot of bitches out here doing that shit. Done did shit for they self. Done worked and, and, and paid they dudes and got shit going for they self and now they sitting their ass up there running behind a man that ain't thinking about that. Baby, bitch, y'all better than me. Ain't no money. I want what want me and I love what love me back. If you show me one ounce of motherfucking you don't love me or you don't want me, trust and believe what you don't want, another man will. And I'm going to keep on moving. I ain't never been shot on being able to move on to another motherfucker. Yeah, I was stuck with one for 17. That's because he was stuck to me, bitch. It wasn't because I was stuck to him. And moving on from that shit. Is this bitch gonna get up and leave him handcuffed talking about, uh, she'll think about them getting back together, but she not ready yet. Basically, KD want this man to run behind her. I guess she ain't never had a man that run behind her, so she wanna try to get that in in her life, and it really is a plus that it's on TV, but she wants him to try to do all, basically flip through hurdles to get her back, and I don't understand why he gotta flip through hurdles when he didn't flip through them bitches to get you. you just the same as easy as it was for him to get with you bitch, it ought to be easy for him to get back with you. You either gonna love self and leave the nigga alone, or you gonna motherfucking keep dealing with him and deal with everything that comes with him. One of the two. But baby knees, you getting on my motherfucking nerves, you big pie face bitch. Now, on the Jocelyn and Carly, they meeting up. And every time Carly get around motherfucking Jocelyn, she gotta bring up Jessica Dime. Like I said, Mona didn't get this bitch no dick to suck on this this season, so she making her extra messy. So Jocelyn, I mean, Carly decided that now's the time to tell Jocelyn what the fuck uh, Dime done said. Dime said you ate a box and you paid her. See, let me tell you why I like Jocelyn. Jocelyn the type bitch to live, then stand up in her shit. If I did it, I did it. Jocelyn told us a long time ago, three, four seasons ago, I I, I, I used to see a pussy. I swung on a pole. I did whatever the fuck I had to do. You know, I did something strange for a little change. 
all of that. So, Carly bringing that situation there up didn't fuck with her at all. And that's my type of bitch. Because if I did it, I, I stand up in it. She told her straight up, yeah, I, you know, yeah, she didn't eat the box or, or whatever, you know. And I gave the bitch some money because I wanted to because she was broke as fuck and she needed it. See, that's my type of bitch. It ain't like we ain't know that Jocelyn and, Jocelyn and Stevie get down like that with them threesomes and shit. It ain't like that Jocelyn ain't never let us know that she she don't have a problem with a female. Uh, she'll she'll live with a bitch as quick as she will a nigga. Okay? Ain't like she ain't already told us that. So you can't tell on a bitch that already told on herself. And you can't shame her when she not already told her truth. So she wasn't doing, Carly Red didn't do nothing to Jocelyn when she told her about this shit. Jocelyn admitted to this shit and kept it moving, told her, look, you tell that bitch to come see me in the studio because I'm tired of this whole always bringing my name up. Bitch been bringing my name up since I got here. And let's just be real. Since Jessica been on this show, she has always brought up Je uh, Jocelyn's name. She always bring her name up. Now, one time have you heard Jocelyn say anything about Jessica Dan? Jessica bring her up, and then she tried. She was the first one to start shading the girl. So whatever the fuck happened, happened. You know, it is what it is. So she sent Carly back to tell the bitch to meet me at the studio. Since you keep wanting to bring my name up, it's time we find the fucking talk. Because I'm sick of you, bitch. I don't need you. I don't want you. Build your own brand. Stop trying to ride off my damn name. I done came over here to the Love and Hip Hop ATL and made a name for me. Jessica Dime will never be Jocelyn. I don't give a fuck what she do, how much drama she try to create, bitch. That position at Star of the Show does now and will remain with the Puerto Rican princess. I don't know what to tell you, bitch. You might as well take your big booty ass back to motherfucking Florida and get on that pole, bitch. Do something for yourself. Running around here looking like a big ass strawberry. I cannot with these holes on here. I cannot, Jesus. Jocelyn say she ain't trying to hit that shit. Bitch can't expose her. She gonna expose a bitch. <laughs> Anyway, child, Kalina goes back over to the club to get Tony to sign that paper. Now, that was a test. She didn't really expect him to sign them papers quickly. She thought that when she showed him that she was seriously going to go and look for other management, that that would somehow trigger him into realizing that I ain't finna let my wife just, you know, I'm not going to do this here. But what she don't realize, just like Rashida don't realize, these niggas don't give a fuck. They here for the ride. Okay? I ain't saying they don't love you at all, bitch, but they don't love you like you love them, okay? This nigga was willingly ready to sign those motherfucking papers, because why not? He don't want to deal with her with that shit no more. Apparently, he don't believe in her like that. Uh, she out of her motherfucking feeling, child. Yeah, she out in her motherfucking feeling. She is out in her motherfucking feeling. She getting mad because she thought he wasn't going to say that. Girl. When somebody show you who the fuck they are, believe them. That's all I can tell you. The man showed you when he walked in there at 10 o'clock in the morning and went to cussing your ass out because you was mad by him being disrespectful and showing up to the house so late or so early in the morning after being gone all night long. Girl, the man showed you who he was, so how can you be surprised? He basically signed that paper and told her, you know, he'll talk to her later. She, she left out of there crying, talking about he get on her nerve. Well, he might get on your nerve, but bitch, you married to him. And you, and more importantly, you can get him all your damn money. So, them nerves, you better work on them hoes. Get you some medication for them. Well, the last scene of the show was Jocelyn and Stevie in the studio, and they was working on some music. I'm glad they finally started to show her doing some stuff with her music. Now, I'm not saying Jocelyn no fucking Lil' Kim, and she sure ain't no Nicki Minaj. But what I'm saying is, if you're going to use, if you going to put product out or whatever, you're going to try to make this work for you, then, girl, auto-tune the fuck out the shit and go on and put some music out. Do whatever the fuck it take to keep your fucking star shining and rising. 
So it was good to see her in the studio. It didn't sound bad. It didn't sound good. It just didn't, it sounded like unfinished product. We don't really know what that's gonna be. You know, I ain't think I like Stingy with my cootie care, but I like that motherfucking shit. So come on through, Jocelyn. She in there working in the studio doing what these other bitches, namely Dime, wanna do. And speaking of Dime, here she come, a strawberry shortcake looking ass up in there. And Jocelyn was basically like, who is that? I can't see who it is. Well, Stevie tell her how to get into the sound booth where uh, where she at, where Jocelyn is, because apparently this bitch don't know nothing about no studio. She ain't never been in one. So, she come in there, and that's basically where it breaks off here. Uh, Jocelyn walk up to her, telling her, hey, I heard you been looking for me. And you see them doing the face off because they ain't really saying shit until it shows next week. Now, next week, we supposed to see them hoes actually get into it. Uh, Margo gonna perform. We gonna finally get to see her do something on the show, which y'all gonna enjoy her. She alright. Um, Mimi and Don gonna bump heads because Mimi gonna find out that Don trying to take dime from her and stuff. And, and Don gonna show Mimi her true colors next week. And, um, we gonna see Stevie J and Jocelyn signing some shit about a movie deal, so... That's what we got to look forward to next week, guys. Um, I apologize again that I wasn't able to put out the product that I did last night that I felt was really good. But it is what the fuck it is. Um, I'll be back later on tonight with the haves and have-nots. In the meantime, in between time, please like, comment, subscribe. Tell somebody about me, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.